Hey guys, welcome to the 18th lecture of the DIP series. This is Anushtika Riski and today we're going to talk about image transforms. We're also going to cover discrete cosine transform and discrete Fourier transform. So let's get started. Let's look at image transforms first. What are image transforms? They're basically mathematical tools that help us to convert images from spatial domain to frequency domain. Why converting images from spatial to frequency domain? It's because it makes many applications easier. It makes it easier to process the images if they are in frequency domain. Let's look at some advantages for transforming images. The first one, it may isolate critical components of image pattern so that they are directly accessible for analysis. So some of the components of the image, it makes it directly accessible okay uh, when it is in frequency domain next one it may place image data in a more compact form so that it can be stored and transmitted efficiently okay it is also useful for fast computation of 2d convolution and correlation and it is reversible which means that if you want the original image back we can get it very easily okay the original image isn't changed in any way it is just represented differently when uh, image transforms are used on it okay now image transforms are of different types so let's look at discrete Fourier transform first we look at one dimensional DFT the formula for which is f of k is equal to sigma x equal to 0 to n minus 1 f of x e raised to minus j 2 pi k x by n where k is equal to 0 1 and so on till n minus 1 the inverse dft of this would be f of x is equal to 1 by n sigma k equal to 0 n minus 1 f of k e raised to j 2 pi k x by n where x is equal to 0 1 2 and so on till n minus 1 you will understand this better when you solve the questions Okay, so we'll look at a question now. Now let's look at a question here. But before we start with the question, I'll show you a list of already calculated values. So here we have uh, some already calculated values and important formulas. So these will come in handy when we do the question. Okay, so we refer to this later. Now we have the question, compute DFT of the sequence f of x is equal to 1001 0, 0, 1. okay so what we'll do is we'll just write down the indices here which is 0 1 2 3 okay now we'll write down the formula so dft formula is f of k is equal to sigma x equal to 0 to n minus 1 f of x e raised to minus j 2 pi k x by n right where k is equal to 0 1 and so on till n minus 1 right so now what we do is in this case we have four values so that's why here n would be equal to 4 so what will our formula become f of k is equal to sigma x equal to 0 to 3 f of x e raised to minus j 2 pi k x by 4 right now this uh, let's take the sigma out and we will write f of 0 e raised to what will this become if x is 0 then we we'll substitute 0 over here so it will become e raised to 0 plus f of 1 e raised to minus j 2 pi k by 4 right because x is 1 plus f of 2 e raised to minus j now what will this become 2 into 2 will be 4 by 4 so this will get cancelled so minus j pi k right plus f of 3 e raised to 
now this will be 3 into 2 6 so 6 by 4 it would be 3 by 2 right so minus j 3 pi k by 2 right so now what we do is we just simplify this okay and we substitute so f of 0 is 1 so we write 1 here e raised to 0 is 1 plus f of 1 we have 0 so this will become 0 f of 2 also we have 0 so 0 plus we have f of 3 as 1 so e raised to minus j 3 pi k by 2 so our function would become 1 plus e raised to minus j 3 pi k by 2 right now what we do is let's just shift it yeah so we write uh, we'll take each of k values okay so we'll take when k is equal to 0 so here we'll have f of 0 we'll just substitute f of 0 would be 1 plus e raised to 0 right which is 1 plus 1 or 2 now when k is equal to 1 we have f of 1 which is equal to 1 plus e raised to minus j 3 pi by 2 now what will this value be let's look at our important formulas here we have this value is j e raised to minus j 3 pi by 2 as j so we write that down here this will become 1 plus j right now when k is equal to 2 we will have f of 2 is equal to 1 plus e raised to minus j 3 pi 2 by 2 would get cancelled so what is this value let's look at our formulas e raised to minus j 3 pi is minus 1 so this would be 1 minus 1 or 0 next when k is equal to 3 so we'll have f of 3 which is equal to 1 plus e raised to now 3 into 3 is 9 so minus j 9 pi by 2 now this we have e raised to minus j 9 pi by 2 is minus j so we write 1 minus j Now we can write our final answer as f of k is equal to 2 comma 1 plus j comma 0 comma 1 minus j. So this is our final answer. Now usually in your exams you will get questions such as apply DFT on an image. Okay. So for that you need kernel of DFT. So kernel of a 4 point DFT, this is the value and if it is a one dimensional image then uh, f of k is equal to kernel into f of x and for two dimensional the formula is f of kl is equal to kernel into f of x comma y into kernel transpose. So we'll understand this better when we look at the questions. Now look at this question. Calculate 4 point DFT for the sequence x of n is equal to 0 1 2 3 using matrix method so here we have uh, the four point dft in one dimension so the formula will be kernel into input sequence which is we have this kernel here the one which i showed right now and we have the input sequence so we have just written it like this and then we have multiplied these two matrices so we have got this as the result 
Now let's look at one more question. Compute the 2D DFT of the grayscale image given by this. So we have f of m comma n is equal to this matrix, which is our input image. So for 2D DFT, our formula is f of k comma l is equal to kernel into input image into transpose of kernel. And we know our four point DFT kernel, which is this. So now here we calculated using the formula. We took the kernel multiplied by the input image multiplied by the transpose of the kernel. How did we get this transpose? We just interchanged the rows and columns. So this row we wrote it as a column here. The second row we wrote it as a column here and so on. So then we got this matrix. Okay. Which one multiplied by this transpose of the kernel? We got this as our final answer. So that's it for this lecture. I will see you in the next one.